good morning good morning everyone good morning nina good morning good morning so welcome to bc 103 the class on the new testament survey before we could begin with our session on first and second thessalonians i may i request one of us to please lead us in prayer Shri, can you please lead us in prayer? Shri, rather. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for this time, for this day that you have given us, God. And uh, we all came here to uh, learn more from your word, God, and uh, give us the wisdom and knowledge that we can understand your word and uh, lead by your Holy Spirit, God. We surrender every student and Pastor Diana in your hand, God. You bless us, God. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. So uh, let me share the PowerPoint presentation. Give me a minute, please. Okay, Am I, is my video clear? My voice is clear. If there's any time there's a drop in the network, with my video or my voice, please let me know so that uh, you know I can switch the network to a different network. Anand, uh, you're there, right? Yes, ma'am. It's good, ma'am. It's good, ma'am. Okay, so the voice and the video is clear, right, Anand? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, so anytime it drops, please let me know so that you know I can switch the network to something. Okay, sure, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, let me quickly share the screen about our presentation. Okay. Okay, so today we're going to cover both the letters, first and second Thessalonians. First Thessalonians have about five chapters, and in second Thessalonians we have about three chapters. So the first the <coughs> first Thessalonians cover um the first, second, and third chapter is mostly on you know apostle paul was the author of this letter he wrote this letter in a second uh, missionary journey and uh, the first three chapters from first thessalonians uh, more or less it uh, it, it its perspective is to looking back and fourth and fifth chapter it is more towards looking ahead and here we see in the first chapter it mostly talks talks about the new converts and in second chapter it talks about the young pastors and chapter three addresses on the certain issues on the suffering or the perse uh, persecuting christians then the last chapter four and five four addresses few concerns on being tempted and uh uniformed christians and chapter five that is the first last chapter from the first thessalonians it addresses on the sleepy christians um and in second thessalonians uh we have three chapters uh the first chapter uh, yes, it addresses about the trouble from the outside and the second and third chapter addresses the trouble from within, from inside, inside the church itself. And yes, in Second Thessalonians, we have only three chapters and all the three chapters carries a different theme. The chapter uh, one talks about faith. How do we preserve faith? And chapter two gives us a hope in midst of all these confusion it gives us a hope and chapter 3 talks about love there are certain people within the church who rebel against the responsibilities that they have in midst of all that apostle paul is addressing about love and how we need to hold that love 
so as we address them okay let's look at the background let's look at the city of thessalonica itself <coughs> the city was founded in 313 bc and was named after the wife of the founder so under the roman empire it became the capital city of macedonia in approximately 146 bc it was a significant trading city with the uh, largest uh, harbor in that region and later we also see that it became the second largest city in macedonia second only to philippi we also see that this city still exist today yes there's a lot of ruins but then the existence of the city is still there the books of first and second thessalonians were written by apostle paul on a second missionary journey while he was either in athens or in corinth so this letter was probably written between 52 to 54 ad and these two books are very closely tied together and they were um uh, they were written like within few months itself so the very purpose of these letters let's look at the purpose of this letter paul had received a report from timothy regarding the condition of the church and uh, uh, yes there was positive and the negative the report had both positive and negative so on the positive side we see that the believers in the church of thessalonica had very um had been very faithful under the even under the persecution under the pressure of the persecution when we read in first thessalonians chapter 1 verse 1 to 10 can i request one of us to please read Sri Radha, can you read? Nina, uh, anyone, anyone who was available, please take a. Father, chapter one, verse one to ten. Yes. Okay. Paul, Silvanus, and Timothy, to the Church of the Thessalonians, in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, the labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of our God and Father, knowing, beloved brethren, your election by God, for our gospel did not come to you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Spirit and in much assurance, as you know what kind of men we were among you for your sake. And you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy of the Holy Spirit, so that you became examples to all in Macedonia and Achaia who believe. For from you the word of the Lord has sounded forth, not only Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place. Your faith toward God has gone out, so that we do not need to say anything. But they themselves declare concerning us what manner of entry we had to you, and how you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, who delivers us from the wrath to come. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So what we see is, especially when we read from uh, chapter uh, verse 6 to 8, we see that you became followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction with the joy of the Holy Spirit. So there was a pressure of persecution. But you see the Thessalonians try to be uh, remain faithful even under the pressure of persecution 
that's what we see and they had the joy of the holy spirit so that they became the example to all in macedonia and in achaia who believed for from you the word of the lord has uh, sounded forth not only in macedonia and achaia but also in every place your faith toward god has gone out so that we do not need to say anything so this is what uh, apostle paul has been very encouraged with the church of thessalonica for their faithfulness there was persecution everywhere but then in this church it was little different the believers may be small in number but what he's seeing is the faithful even under the persecution they were faithful and here these people this church has been trying to been uh, trying to stand out even under this pressure so this is what apostle paul is saying you're standing out and i don't have to say anything just uh, you know look at the example of yours okay in whole of macedonia and achaia uh, the way uh, you have believed in jesus christ the way you're standing you're holding on to your faith you have been standing out as an example and at the same time he's also addressing certain negative things um from this church okay so let's try to look into certain scripture from chapter 2 um he says on the negative side there were few problems that apostle paul felt that he need to address one was paul felt the need to defend some of his actions when we see from uh, chapter 2 verse 1 to 16 we see some of the conversation he's addressing on how he conducted himself among them so he says for you yourself no brethren that our coming to you was not in vain but even after we had suffered before and were spitefully treated at philippi as you know we we were bold in our god to speak to you the gospel of god in much conflict we also see one of the reason that the church was standing strong because apostle paul was strong even under the persecution apostle paul also had the same kind of pressure but here he gave an example by holding on to his faith strong and you know he preached the gospel to this church for our exhortation i'm i'm reading from chapter 2 verse 3 for our exhortation did not come from error or uncleanness or nor was it in deceit but as we have been approved by god to be trusted with the gospel even so we speak not as pleasing men but god who tests our heart so as an apostle he's also defending his apostleship but then he's giving them an account and he goes on to verse 5 and he says for neither at any time did we use flattering words as you know nor a clock for covetousness god is witness so apostle paul was a person who was very direct he never used any kind of flattery word to entice people um but then he was very direct so he's he's encouraging the people how to conduct themselves as a leader as a church member as a believer how you need to conduct yourself he goes beyond that verse 6 he says nor did we seek glory from men uh, either from you or from others when we might have made demands as apostle of christ these are the few this um they are self-explanatory so i will just go directly read so that we understand what was apostle paul trying to tell this church in thessalonica the correction that he is bringing to them about how to conduct themselves verse 7 says but we were gentle among you just as a nursing mother cherishes her own children so affectionately longing for you we were well pleased to impart to you not only the gospel of god but also our own lives because you had become dear to us he taught them with love for you remember brethren our labor and toil for laboring night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you we preached to you the gospel of god 
verse 10. You are witnesses and God also. How devoutly and justly and blamelessly we behaved ourselves among you who believe. As you know how we exhorted and comforted and charged every one of you as a father does his own children. So he was not very lovingly to this church, but then he also was stern in certain things. He was bringing correction to them. He was com correction, comforting and charge. That is raising each one to be strong leaders in the church and he did all that with a fatherly heart um, you know considering each one as his own children and that's when you see all these three things come in when somebody uh, you know looks at you as their own children you know they want to see you somebody better in life they want to see you grow in leadership uh, grow in the lord that's when they try to do implement these three things that is correction comfort and charge that you would walk worthy of God who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. So for this reason, we also thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcomed it not as a word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. For you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God, which are in Judea, in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same thing from your own countrymen, just as they did from Judean, who killed both Lord Jesus and their own prophets, and have persecuted us, and they do not please God, and are con contrary to all men. 16 forbidding us to speak to the gentiles that they may be saved so as always to fill the measure of their sin but wrath has come upon them to the uttermost so here we also see apostle paul warning them and he's telling them why he was not with them in the later part when you read from 17 to 20 he's also saying why i was not um, brethren have been taken away from you for a short time in presence not in heart endure more eagerly to see your face with great desire therefore we wanted to come to you even i paul time and again but satan hindered us for what is our hope, our joy, our crown or of rejoicing? It is not even uh, you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming. For you are our glory and our joy. So he looks at the church at Thessalonians and he says that you are the glory and joy of us. Um, so and that's why uh, he sends Timothy to this church. Um, you know, when there was pressure and persecution, um, uh, he, he left. Um, uh, so to avoid any confusion, he leave the church. Just give me a minute. One second.
sorry i'm back thank you so much so <clears throat> yeah um we see that during the persecution at church at Thessalonica, we may look at it deeply uh, later, like there was a reason. Mm. There was a reason why Apostle Paul left Thessalonica and then uh, he allowed, he encouraged Timothy to stay back to take care of the church. Um, we also see uh, here Apostle Paul addressing on chapter 4 certain things like Paul felt the need to admonish them regarding the Christian behavior. So certain things, the three things that I see in this chapter that he's trying to address was on self purity that is on sexual purity. Chapter 4 verse 1 to 8 when we read he talks about um, you know, on uh, how to manage or maintain the sexual, sexual purity. Can I request one of you all to please turn to chapter 4, verse 1 to 8, and one of us can please read. Finally, then, brethren, we urge and exhort in the Lord Jesus that you should abound more and more just as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God. For you know what commandments we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you should abstain from sexual immorality, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel in sanctification and honor, not in passion of lust, like the Gentiles who do not know God, that no one should take advantage of and defraud his brother in this matter. Because the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also forewarned you and testified. For God did not call us to uncleanness, but in holiness. Therefore, he who rejects this does not reject man, but God, who has also given us his Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you so much. So as he, uh, yeah, it's self-explanatory, as he addressed on self purity in this chapter is also explaining on the brotherly love um can one of your uh, prince can you please read from chapter 4 verse 9 to 12 please <clears throat> um, chapter 9 chapter 4 9 to 12 but concerning brotherly love you have no need that I should write to you, for you yourselves are taught by God to love one another. And indeed, you, you do so toward all brethren who are, in, who are in all Macedonia. But we urge you, brethren, that you increase more and more, that you also aspire to lead a quiet life, to mind your own business, and to work with your own hands as we commanded you that you may walk properly towards those who are outside and that you may lack nothing. Thank you. So here, Apostle Paul is addressing on the brotherly love. How, as a brother, we need to be concerned about each other. And he also goes ahead in uh, chapter 11, verse 11, he also addresses to avoid any kind of conflict. He says, Please, let's mind our own business and, you know, work with our own hands as we are commanded to do so. And uh, verse 12 says that you may walk properly toward those who are outside, that you may not lack anything. So if we have our own correction, how can we correct another person? So Apostle Paul is, uh, you know, encouraging each of us to check our own contact, help us to uh, help e uh, I mean, each of us walk rightly so that we may not be lacking in anything else. Okay, and uh, chapter 5, verse 12 and 13. Can I request anyone else to read chapter 5, verse 12 and 13? Uh, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, 12 and 13, ma'am. Yes. We ask you, brothers, to respect those who labor among you 
and over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love because of their work. Be at peace among themselves. Yeah, thank you so much. So here we see Apostle Paul is encouraging the church leadership to treat one another with love. He is urging them. He's saying, recognize those who labor among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake. Be at peace among yourself as much as possible. Even in the different letters, Apostle Paul is encouraging each of us saying, as much as possible, live with peace with one another. And also we see Paul felt the need to correct them in the doctrinal area uh, and uh, relating to the afterlife and the second coming of Jesus Christ. So Timothy most likely delivered this letter to the church. We also uh, we will also look at a certain background of this letter. OK, so the when we look at the background of both first and second Thessalonians, we see that uh, Paul found this church in his second missionary journey. So first missionary journey, <coughs> sorry, first missionary journey, we know who are the people who went together, right? It was Paul and Barnabas. So in second missionary journey, there was a drift between Apostle Paul and Barnabas. So they both separated, went towards different places. So Barnabas took John Mark and headed out to a different place. So Apostle Paul took Silas and he headed out on a second missionary journey. So he first uh, uh from uh, antioch of syria he goes towards the churches that which was found in the first missionary journey and then he tarries at a place because the holy spirit did not allow him to move further this is where we covered in the last class so now what happened the uh, uh apostle paul receives a vision and in the vision he sees a man from macedonia crying uh, crying and asking Apostle Paul to come and help him. So with that vision, Apostle Paul decides to go towards Macedonia. And here we see Paul and Silas, uh, they they went to Macedonia to preach the gospel after, been, after seeing that vision. And they immediately responded and went to first to Philippi. What happened in Philippi? They were beaten up and put into prison we read that and that it was the inner dungeon they put into and shortly after they were released by the supernatural power of the holy spirit and even the the jailer was encountered by the whole incident and uh, through this whole incident the prison uh, the jailer uh, and his whole family, the jailer and his whole family received the salvation through Apostle Paul. So after uh, uh, the because of the persecution pressure there, um, Apostle Paul and Silas left Philippi and they came to Thessalonica. We see this in Acts chapter 16. Acts chapter 16, 40. We saw what happened in the prison and what was the persecution pressure that Apostle Paul was going through. And in Acts chapter 17, verse 1, can I request one of you all to please read Acts chapter 17? So all these epistles can be understood only with the help of Acts. Acts chapter 17, verse 1. If you'll have taken, you can read. Now, when they had passed, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Uh, now, when they had passed through Amphipolis and Apollonia, they came to Thessalonica where there was a synagogue of the Jews. Thank you, Nina. So we see that Apostle Paul came to Thessalonica and he first goes to the synagogue because this was the norm. Wherever Apostle Paul went to a new place, he went in search of a synagogue. And um, if the synagogue was not there, then he went on the streets to share the gospel. But 
as a norm he went to the synagogue and um, he shares the gospel and if the jews received it good but when they reject he then steps out of the synagogue and shares the gospel to the gentiles who are there so in uh, ch chapter 17 verse 1 to 3 when we read i'll read second and third one then paul as his custom was went into them and for three sabbath reasoned with them from the scriptures explaining and demonstrating that christ had to suffer and rise again from the dead saying this jesus whom i preach to you is christ so Apostle Paul followed his normal custom and started his missionary journey in the synagogue of the Jews. And then he reasons out there. He, uh, he, uh, then he see that, you know, the Jews were not very uh, keen in receiving the word. And then, you know, what happens? Verse 4. And some of them were persuaded and a great multitude of the devout Greeks and not a few of the leading women joined <clears throat> Paul and Silas. But the Jews who were not persuaded, becoming envious, took some of the evil men from the marketplace and gathering a mob, set all the city in an uproar and attacked the house of Jason, where Apostle Paul was staying, and sought to bring them out to the people. Verse 6. But when they did not find them, they dragged Jason and some brethren to the rulers of the city, crying out, These who have turned the world upside down have come here too. Jason has harbored them. And these are all acting contrary to the degrees of Caesar, saying, There is another king, Jesus. And they troubled the crowd and the rulers of the city when they heard these things. So when they had taken security from Jason and the rest, they let them go. So this is what happened. Um, so Paul had his usual twofold reaction uh, in that quite a number of people were persuaded and believed. Uh, but those who were not persuaded and did not believe in Jesus stirred up a riot against apostle paul and uh, you know the household of jason were dragged to the magistrate with all the false charges against him and then uh the the council they took in uh, took certain charges security charges from jason and they let apostle paul and others go through so because of this pressure of situation paul and silas were smuggled out of the town by night and they went to Berea, where they continued to minister. We see that in verse 10. Uh, then the brethren immediately sent Paul and Silas away by night to Berea. When they arrived, they went to the synagogue of the Jews. And then we see uh, verse 13, uh, 13 and 14. But when the Jews from Thessalonica learned that the word of God was preached by Apostle Paul at Berea, they didn't stop there. You know, they came there and also stirred up the crowds. Then immediately, the brethren sent Paul away to go to the sea. Both Silas and Timothy remained there. So Silas and Timothy remained at Berea and Apostle Paul left. So Paul was forced to leave this place because of these riot so paul traveled to athens where he ministered in the marketplace while he waited for silas and timothy to rejoin him we see that when we read from verse 15 to 34 we see that and eventually um timothy joined apostle paul in athens long enough um paul uh, had to send him back to Thessalonica to help to strengthen the new believers with the uh, new work which God has started in them. So Paul did not stay in Athens for long. He went on to Corinth where he started a business and he partnered with 
Akila and Priscilla. And then he also started a prayer group in their place. And he started to preach in the synagogue. There we see that in Acts chapter 18, verse 1 to 4. After these things, Paul departed from Athens and went to Corinth. And he found a certain Jew named Akila, born in Pontius, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla. Uh, we see that because Claudius had commanded all the Jews to depart from uh, Rome and he came to them. So because he was of the same trade, he stayed with them and worked for they, for by occupation they were tent makers. And he reasoned in the synagogue every Sabbath and persuaded both Jews and Greeks. So he started to stay there, teach them teach in the synagogue we also see from verse 6 to 8 but when they opposed him blasphemed he shook his garment and said to them your blood be upon your heads i'm clean from now on i will go to the gentiles he was very clear when he said that because mm, there was a continuous uh persecution from the Jews so for which he went toward, toward the Gentiles because they were more receptive in receiving the gospel and verse 7 we see that he departed from there and entered the house of a certain man named Justice one who worshipped God whose house was next door to the synagogue then Crispus the ruler of the synagogue believed on the Lord with all his household and many of the Corinthians hearing believed and were baptized. Verse 9 and 10. Okay, verse 9 and 10. Now the Lord spoke to Apostle Paul in the night by a vision. Do not be afraid, but speak and do not keep silent. For I am with you and no one will attack you to hurt you for i have many people in this city that was a good news and a door open for apostle paul from the lord and you see the follow-up of the church continued paul sent uh, um, timothy back to thessalonica to uh, strengthen the new believers in the work that god has begun among them and we also see when timothy returned and gave a report to apostle paul Paul wrote to follow up on the report that is in the second um, Thessalonians. We see that the report had two emphasis that Paul addressed. Paul commended them for their faith. Paul commended them for, for the faith in face of adversity. Second, we see that Paul corrected some problems that were prevalent in the church and uh, that was one of the reasons why he wrote second letter. Okay, let me see. Okay, this is the map. Sorry, I didn't project it before. Okay, we see uh, Thessalonians. Here. First, he came to Philippi. When he entered uh, Macedonia, he went to Philippi. Then from Philippi, he moved to Thessalonica. From Thessalonica, he went to Berea because of the persecution. And this is where he was preaching minister and he sent back timothy back to thessalonica to strengthen the new church and believers yeah and then later he came to corinth and from here he wrote the letters to thessalonica okay i've not come here let me be here okay so paul uh, wrote the second letter to the church to address certain uh uh, uh certain uh, uh you want to address briefly at the end of their uh, third missionary journey uh which this letter was circulated to them and he addressed in the second thessalonians he addresses on faith hope and love um and also about the second coming of jesus christ Okay, we will move on to look at the theme of this letter, First and Second Thessalonians. Uh, Paul was, uh, um, you know, uh, 
counteracting on some false concept that the people had regarding the second coming of Jesus. They, uh, they were suggesting that the Christians who die in faith would not have the same glorious experience of Christ's return. So they would miss out on that. They were expecting that the second coming of Jesus would be immediate. So Paul let the people know that the second coming will not be a quiet event that those who die in faith would would um, uh, faith would not miss out so he addresses on certain things here he says christ will return with a loud shout an archangel will make a similar commotion and he also says that uh, we see that in first thessalonians chapter 4 we can turn to first thessalonians chapter 4 verse 13 to 17 Okay, he addresses on these things. There would be a loud trumpet uh, will sound and that those who are dead in the Christ will rise first because they have future to go. And then those believers who are alive on earth, that's we, will ascend with them to meet the Lord in the air. And lastly, he also addresses that we will live together with the Lord forever. He also addresses from 9 to 12, in the same chapter, 9 to 12, they were those who were suggesting since uh, Christ's return was imminent, they, there was no need to stay engaged in work. They were opposing people from being, you know, engaged in work. So Apostle Paul is, you know, addressing all these challenges to tell them, like, when the Lord is coming, it would be a great event. So you do what you are doing. Occupy with the work till the Lord comes. And uh, we also see in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 18, he says, um, focuses on the relationship of the second coming of Christ. So in relation to the believer. So this book sees the comfort size of the comfort side of the second coming of Jesus. So this is the last word. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. In 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7 to 10, when we read verse 7 to 10, here we see it focuses on the relationship of second coming of Christ in relation to the unbeliever. So the book sees the judgment side of the second coming. Um, yeah, I would encourage you all to please read this so that we can save up on time to cover both these letters. So there are three key words in this uh, letter. In the second Thessalonians, we see three key words of the biblical or the Christian experience we can talk about. That is faith, hope and love. Um, let's turn to first Thessalonians chapter one, verse two and three. It says to this. Uh, Two and three, we give thanks to God always for you, all making mention of you in our prayer, remembering without ceasing your work of faith, hope, that is faith, labor of love, and patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ in the sight of our God and Father. So we see that this letter is addressing on these three key words, that is faith, hope, and love. So the, the work of faith, their labor of love, the patience of hope. And, uh, you know, it, okay, let me, yeah. Okay, we see in this whole letter, that is first and second Thessalonians, the word faith, the key word faith occurs more than 13 times. And hope occurs more than five times and love occurs eight times and Paul commends the believers at Thessalonica for three things for three things one is the work of faith the work of faith so we see that the work of faith is seen in these believers was during the uh, turning from idols they turning to God in the face of persecution and their joy in the Holy Spirit Yeah. 
So this is where we see uh, their work of faith. And the next point, we see their labor of love. Is seen in these believers was the willingness to serve the living God and all that it means. We also see the area of patience of hope. When Paul sought to strengthen the church, their hope was to wait for Christ's return and to prospect of, uh, you know, uh, to be delivered and from wrath to come upon. And uh, we also see throughout Apostle Paul's epistles okay some of the letters like first thessalonians first corinthians galatians colossians uh, uh first and second timothy titus revelation um yeah even in the second thessalonians we see some of these words follow in all these letters apostle paul uh, talks about or preaches the gospel by encouraging now uh, in these three key factors that is faith hope and love to the believers in Christ. He also emphasizes on the deity and exaltation of Lord Jesus Christ. We see in the whole letter, uh, Lord, the phrase of the word Lord Jesus or Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, um, the key words have been used many times in these two letters, first and second Thessalonians, whereas he addresses Lord Jesus Christ 20 times, Lord Jesus has four times, Lord 21 times. Um, yeah, I've just listed out those numbers. So some of the unique features of this book is Paul gives us a good look at the spirit of truth and false ministry. Yeah, uh, almost I'm finishing false ministry and Paul teaches them how to face adversity, uh, especially to the church in Thessalonica. He's teaching about how to face adversity by telling them, you know, maintain your example in affliction. Your testimony is stronger because of what you are going through. And he's also encouraging them saying, maintain your boldness. Do not fear what men can do to you. By saying that, he's also setting himself as an example to the church. And he's also so encouraging them saying maintain your faith knowing that the affliction is part of your destiny as believers so he's been very uh, um, direct or frank to tell them as a believer what we would be going through and he's also encouraging them and telling them saying that god will take care of those who trouble you remember that you will find rest when Christ returns, that's the greater glory. That's the reward that you would get when Jesus Christ comes, the second coming. He also addresses on, uh, you know, uh, in Second Thessalonians, we see that Apostle Paul introduces us to the Antichrist. That is in the Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 to 12, he addresses on this. He's saying that he is seen as a man of sin, the son of prediction and the lawless one he also says that he will perform lying signs and wonders he will deceive many who will worship him as god and he will be destroyed at the second coming of jesus christ so he's preparing the church he's preparing the church for them to be more focused on jesus christ so whatever the persecution that they are enduring is for a shorter while be bold be fearless Hold on to your faith. Uh, your reward is in the Lord. So just like our Apostle Paul is encouraging the believers in the Thessalonian church, we see that this letter also encourages you and me as we wait upon the Lord for the second coming of Jesus Christ. So as we are waiting upon the Lord, can we examine ourselves and ask, can we example ourselves and ask God, is our hope in Christ's return changing the way we live our life? Are we disciplining and are we having this self-control evident in our life? When we ask certain questions and examine ourselves, there may be certain areas that the Holy Spirit will throw light upon and we can correct and bring a change in our life. Let these two letters uh, be a witness to discipline us, to draw us close to the Lord. Can we close um, this session with a word of prayer? Yeah. Dear God, we thank you, we praise you, we love you. 
Lord, we pray that these two letters as we study on first and second Thessalonians, Lord, I pray that letter discipline change us inside out. May we be bold and fearless as we wait upon you, as we undergo the persecution, the pressure that what we are going through in different places. Father, I pray that, Lord, you will draw us close to you. Help us to be uh, prepare ourselves, discipline ourselves, and be in with an expectant heart for the second coming of Jesus Christ, Lord. May this letter be a true witness. May it bring change and discipline us, Lord. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Class, thank you so much for joining in. I've taken your time. We need to be quick so that we are there for the second hour. Thank you so much. God bless. Thank you for joining in today. God bless.